Now keep quiet when I tell you. <laughs> That's obviously the only way to deal with people like you, like an animal. Well, I hope you've benefited from the lesson and the wash. <laughs> my window! You've broken my window! Mine! That's my window, that is! Yes, we've heard from her before, as you can see. She seems to like complaining. I've met them. Right, now, you know the area man out there, do you? Uh, yes, sir. Eric Way. Yeah, well, uh, get the details from him. Find out what it's all about, but mainly I'm interested in you chatting this woman. You want me to warn her off? Well, not in so many words. Just let her see, woman to woman, that we could be more usefully employed. Well, maybe she's got a case, sir. Maybe. Just see how it goes. That's it. Be prepared. Way tells me she can be spiteful. With women, too. I hope this doesn't mean you're going to skimp your work again, Constable. I'm as thorough as I need to be, Miss Ford. However, Newtown's sending me a colleague so as we can give you more time. Oh, that's more like it. Who's that? My colleague. A girl? Constable Bayliss. You'll find she's very efficient. Hello, Pauline. Welcome to the wilds. Is that her? Yes, that's our Alexandra. You got instructions? Chat her up and be firm. Good luck. I'm next door if you want me. I'll hammer on the walls. Won't be long. Good morning, Miss Ford. I'm Pauline Bayliss. What do you want? I'm helping Constable Way with his inquiries into your dispute with Mr. Haskell. Are you competent? I'm trained. Well, the constable doesn't seem to have achieved very much. I doubt if you can do any better. Well, let's see, shall we? I have given all the particulars to Mr. Way. Then perhaps you'll give them to me. Inside? It's a very nice garden. Oh, I don't know why I bother with it. It'll all be taken away from me. Well, that's very unlikely. Have you been here long? Ten years. Where were you before that? Berry. Teaching. I didn't like Berry. You don't teach around here at all? Oh, no, thank goodness. Well, there are some quite nice schools. Well, now, yes, not, but not when I was teaching. You must have left it quite young. Yes. My health, which, as you can imagine, has not been improved by this business. 
That's what's so stupid. She'd never complain about that sore before. Would you say anything to upset her? No. I just said I was going to get on with the job. And then when I got settled into it, that's when she threw the water. Uh, I'd had a nasty accident with that old sore. Well, that's true. Oh, it annoyed me. I suppose so. That's when I threw the logs. At her? No, at the door. A silly thing to do. I know that. Well, I know it now. Lucky it was only one window broken. Yeah. Your window. <laughs> Hers. No, she said you called it your window purse, being possessive, sort of. I don't know what I said. Well, you want to be careful what you say. What you do. What about her? Her too. Yeah, well. Well, you're going to get that window repaired? Well, she can get it done. I'll give the money, I'll pay her a couple of quid, and that'll be that. And apologise to her? No. Oh, I should do that. Well, his uh, people seem decent enough. Did you know them? Oh, no, no, not to speak to. But uh, they seemed uh, polite. But Mr. Haskell's not like that. Oh, no, rude, surly, always chopping things, sawing. I know we're only three miles from Newtown, but this is the country, Miss Ford. I know that. You have to make allowances. I do not accept excuses for bad behaviour. You miss teaching, don't you? Yes. It's a pity you had to retire early. It was a tragedy. What did you teach? History. Well, at least I can keep up with that, even if I can't teach it. Well, you've certainly got a lot of books. Hmm. Yes, that's where my pension goes, mostly. Uh -huh. That and the rent. You see, I can't afford to leave here. I couldn't afford more rent and my books. No, I understand that. Do you read? Oh, a bit. I don't have much time. <sighs> Strange. What is? Girl like you, a police officer. I mean, compared to Mr. Way. I'd never thought of it like that. You're very sympathetic. Well, why not? If I could be sure. Sure about what? I, I do need help from someone. I'm, I'm very shy. I always have been. That, that's why I appear rude sometimes, but shy mostly, yes. Yes, can I help you? Oh, uh, well, um, uh, my name is Haskell. Oh, uh, what is it? What's happened? I'll come over. I can see that. We can go back again. Let's wait and see what Mr. Haskell wants, Miss Ford. No, it's nothing to do with you. I, I don't want him here. I have a perfect right to be here. I, uh, all this stuff belongs to me. Look, Miss, you, you tell her that as a landlord I have a reasonable right of entry. See? That's right, Miss Ford. But he is so unreasonable. He simply come here to insult me again. I come here to offer to pay for the window. I'll, I'll put you in a cheque. Oh, I should think so. Well, that's very good of you, Mr. Haskell. Mr. Well, least he can do. And I was also going to apologise. I wasn't obliged to apologise. And now I am not going to apologise. I'll be back in a minute. Will that be necessary? Seems to me the matter is settled. You consider it settled, Miss Ford? You don't want to press any sort of charge? Seems hopeless. Morning, Yeah, hey, I want you. Set the law. All right, Yavin. I guess too much, else. Not to worry. <laughs> oh, no, you don't worry, but, but I like to keep it straight, you know. Oh, it's like her. She'd settle every day if she could. Oh, it's fuzzy. 81 pence first. 81? Ah, you know, she <laughs> practically took the top off one the other day to see if it were fresh. <laughs> Nosy old baggage. Yeah, hey, Yavin. Hey, hey, you hear about my bother? No. Uh, daft business. She threw water all over me. Do her a bit of good, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, no, a bit much so, you know. Uh, I mean, well, I'll take have... this up for you, Percy. Yes, what? Well, yeah, all right. Well, thanks, Dick. <laughs> I know what 
you're trying to do. I'm, I'm burning garden rubbish. You're trying to smoke me out. Oh, don't be daft. Wind's blowing every which way. <laughs> That's what I was on about. I'd be smoking myself out. <laughs> well, I? serve you right. <laughs> oh, I don't want that. Oh, well, yours have a pint on Tuesday, Miss Ford. No, I cancelled it the other day. Not to my knowledge, you didn't. Yes, I did. You're giving me too much. Oh, I'm not. Yes, you are. Give me too much, and I won't be able to pay. No, don't be silly, Miss Ford. Don't you talk to me like that. Well, don't you accuse me of trying to leave you extra milk, then. I put all my alterations in my book. It's not there. Have a look. Well, that's because it's a conspiracy. To what? You and Mr. Haskell conspiring against me to take my money away. Ah, that's right, Miss Ford. Well, you'll be all right in the future because I'll not bother calling here anymore. So you'll be saving money, won't you? Mr. Steele! What do I owe you? Oh, forget it. If you're that hard up, you can have it as a present. Well, what do I do for milk? What? I always got on very well with Mr. Steele. Now you poisoned his mind against me. Oh, when are you going to give over? Oh, it's all very well for you. You've got property and influence. I'll be left with nothing. Nobody. And what am I going to do for milk? It's for, for all I care, you can go and buy yourself a cow. Now, come back. No, I'm... You come back here at once. Hey! Oh! You should look where you're going. Oh, you meant to hit me anyway. Good thing I was going slow enough to stop. Well, Mr. Haskell won't be pleased you missed me anyway. What's he got to do with him? He wants me out of the way. What? Well, it's your parents he wants my cottage for, isn't it? You're all in this together, aren't you? I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. And your cousin Steele, he's in it too. What's going on? What's she said to you? She says I tried to run her over. How? Oh. With a bite. It was quite I deliberate. Uh, listen, you must be mad. You can't go around talking to people like that. I am quite within my rights, defending my home and person. Oh, listen, you, you come in with me, love. You come in and have some tea. Don't you wait, but listen, you keep away from her. And if, if I hear you talking to Mrs. Walker like this again, you'll be sorry for her. I promise you. My letters, please. There aren't any for you today. I see. Spiteful. Well, you're not the only one that can be spiteful. Maybe if it had been quiet for another minute, she'd have started to think differently. Was well, she high-handed, did she? She tried to be. It was just like being in class some other time. Class? Well, did you learn anything? I don't think I'd have liked her as a teacher. Too old-fashioned. Speak when you're spoken to, sort of thing. Oh, a bit of a disciplinarian, eh? Maybe she'd have made a good sergeant, eh? Well, I know what you mean, sir, but she hasn't been around enough. Always kept to herself and their books. Well, perhaps they help stimulate her imagination. Maybe she gets airs and graces from them. She talks about Haskell as if she's the lady of the manor instead of the tenant. Get me Dureton, will you? It seems obvious to me, Mr. Way. These people want me out, and they're not fussy how they achieve it. They don't seem the sort of people to do that. Not in the manner you're saying. You only see the smiling side. I have to live here. I see the malice. Harassment is a criminal offence, Miss Ford. And quite right, too. These people are criminals. You sure it's not just Mr. Haskell, are you? That girl, Walker, she's in the conspiracy, and Steele. Anybody else? It's quite possible. Well, I'll, I'll see what I can find out for you. You realize that unless I get immediate results, I shall have to refer the matter higher? Yes, Miss Ford. That is understood. Uh, Mr. Way, you don't seem very enthusiastic. Well, I wouldn't say that, Miss Ford. Perhaps I don't see these people quite as villainous as you do. Well, you better stop. It's your duty. This. Well, is it the old handcuff then? Listen to her, I need to be the firing squad. Well, what have you been up to? Anything she says, I've done just the opposite. 
You lit a fire out there this morning on top of that business with the saw. Garden rubbish. Well, now I smoked her out, she says. Oh, and she stood on top of the thing. It could have caused some inconvenience, though, please. Any bonfire will, won't it, when the wind's blowing every which way? What's this about Mary and the bike? Yeah, well, Mary couldn't miss it awful, could she? You see it? No, no. Did she? Why? It's always best when there's someone else to see these things. Look, you don't believe Miss Ford, do you? Why not? Why not? Well, you don't think Mary would run, run somebody down, do you? Well, I don't know. Not, not... But Mary can get quite stroppy when she's got a head of steam on. Not to run somebody down. Well, that's what Miss Ford thought. Oh, shh. When will I find Mary at home? Oh, about four. Kids will be home from school by then. Right. Percy. Yeah? Do us a favour. What? Be as good as gold with this woman. Keep turning the other cheek. Then it'll fizzle out. You honestly think it'd be as simple as that? No. No, I don't. Did she ever have any quarrel with Mary before? No. No, not that I know of. Well, she's certainly got it in for her now. Uh, through here, Miss Ford. No offences by post office officials are treated very seriously, Miss Ford. Well, I hope this one will be. Now, you have proof, have you, that uh, Mrs Walker has failed to deliver letters to you? Well, several that I expected haven't arrived. Yes, that need not necessarily be her fault, of course. Letters do go astray. Because of people like Mrs. Walker. Oh, all sorts of reasons. When there's a theft of mailbags, for instance, a lot of letters get scattered. Well, I don't think it's anything as dramatic as that in my case. It could be very serious, Miss Ford. I have told Mr. Way. Yes, I know. He reported it to me. You seem to be under some pressure, Miss Ford. Oh, I am. Going by the number of complaints you've brought. There are a lot of ways people can be unpleasant if they really want to. Are you quite sure that these people are deliberately going out of their way to pester you? Well, it's obvious. You sure you mightn't be exaggerating just a little? It's easy for you to say that. Well, perhaps I'm in a better position to judge. You're secure. People aren't against you. Oh, I wouldn't say that. A lot of people seem to dislike the police these days. Well, you're not all alone, like I am. I know it can be difficult, but... Uh... I would have thought it would have been possible to join some sort of institute or club. In this area? Well, I believe it's easier in the country than the town. Are you suggesting that I am in need of some sort of therapy? No, no, just companionship. Well, what sort of people would they be? Oh, all sorts. I don't want all sorts. I want my sort. You delivered to Miss Ford's today? No, why should I? Well, it's all a bit of a nonsense, really. Ah, maybe, but it gets on your nerves after a time. I've got enough to do without her being awkward. Well, she's been stuck for milk, you know. I mean, there's no one else around here. Oh, that's her lookout. She's got enough on her plate without you doing your not. Well, she asked for it. Maybe. All right, then I'll give her one last chance. It's the last time, man. Good lad. Yeah, it was my fault, really. See? <laughs> Ah, well, she'd cancelled her pint and I'd forgot. Well, there you go. And how many other of you innocents is in the wrong? You reckon you were thorough with these people? I'd say so, sir. Get on well with your local people, do you? Yes, sir. Too well, maybe. Sir? Too friendly, too matey. Well, I wouldn't say that. It shows in your report, not just this one, anyone. Well, I consider it to be part of my work, sir. Only part. You've always got to have something in reserve. Being friendly helps me understand my locals. They know they don't get any favours. But Miss Ford doesn't know that, does she? Miss Ford's a perishing nuisance. Ah. Is that your own opinion, Way? Or have you been listening to the interested parties? Well, that's my opinion, sir. Why put in hours for her out of all proportion? Wasted time, eh? Well, most of it. On the other hand, there's always something to these stories. I mean, she's an educated woman. You never know when things might get out of hand. Now, these people, the Haskells and whatever, are they reasonable people? Well, very. I mean, Mr. Haskell makes gates, hurdles, and helps out on the local farm. Odd job, man, eh? Well, more skilled, handyman, more like. Hmm. And Mary Walker? Postman, eh? <laughs> she took the round over from her mother. Rides a bike all weathers. And how does she fit in with Haskell? Well, he's a widower, she's divorced, and they reckon to get wed. 
Steele, the milkman? Mary's cousin. Well, if there's nothing in that. I mean, most people are related in some way around Dewitton. Uh, Miss Ford's complaints, they go back, what, 18 months? Any significance in that? 18 months. No, I can't place anything, sir. Let me know if you think of something. Yes, sir. Oh, hello, Mary. What have you been up to today, then? What, me? Aye, done some letter bombs for her. <laughs> That's not funny, Dick. No, I know, I, I don't mean it. I've really. made mistakes in my job. We all do. You do. Aye, some. But I wouldn't do anything deliberate. Well, I know how people like their posts. They would look forward to it if they're lonely. I wouldn't deprive them. Not even her. Oh, but, I mean, you've been told that we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. Conspiracy. <laughs> Make you smile if it weren't so serious. Oh, but we ought to stand together, mind. I mean, I was being in the same family, and, and Percy's almost it. It wouldn't do any harm to keep in touch, and then if things get any worse, well, we can all act together, can't we? Do something about it. Do something about it? Ah, we well, may make something of it. Well, how? Well, I don't know yet. I, I'm not having us take much more stick without doing something. I don't think you're taking this seriously enough. Well, I don't think you are either. Shooting with intent to kill or even wound is a very serious matter. I think you'd be wise to make quite sure before you go making any accusations. But I am sure. I was in the lane and he hunted me. You were some way away from Mr. Haskell and behind a thick hedge when he fired. Well, still could have hit me. Well, not with a 410, I don't think. Well, that means nothing to me. It's a shotgun, Miss Ford. It fires a spread shot and loses effect over any great distance. Well, that's no consolation. It looks as though he was firing away from you. Well, you said it spread. Yeah, but not backwards. Now, don't you laugh? I'm not laughing. He still could have shot me. Can you prove that? Well, what else was he shooting at then? That's what I was shooting at. That's what I got. Whereabouts was it? It was, uh, it ran out from the hedge, went across the open field, and I got it. <laughs> the next thing I heard was, uh, oh, Miss Ford, you know, I'll run her head off that I've been trying to kill her or something. Whereabouts was she? She was in the lane, other side of the hedge. Could you have fired through the hedge at all? No, 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 look, it left the hedge, it went out to the open field, and that's where I aimed. Mm -hmm. Did, uh, you know Miss Ford was the other side of the hedge? No, there's no way of knowing that. Now, look, Mr Haskell, I reckon your hearing is as good as the next man's. Did you hear Miss Ford at all? Look. There's no way I could have heard her unless she was singing, you know. She walks around in flimsoles, that one, you know. Creeps around like a... like a Red Indian. <laughs> Still going on at her about the cottage, are you? No, I am not. Oh, I admit I want the cottage, but, uh, I don't go on about it. Oh, I know she says I do, but... She's unfurnished, isn't she? Yeah. Don't stand a snowball's chance, do you? <laughs> Pays her rent regular, does she? Yeah, always. Why do you need the place so urgent? Well, I'm getting wet again, you see. I want it for the wife's parents. They'll have to move from where they are, and, uh, well, they'll need looking after sometime or another. And somebody's got to find a place for Miss Ford, haven't they? Yeah, I, I know that. That's why I don't keep on at her. Or take pot shots at her. That was a terrible thing for her to say. He'll tell your sergeant all sorts of stories. They'll all be lies. Well, I'm sure Sergeant Stone can spot them. He's pretty good at that. He'll listen to Mr. Haskell. He's a property owner. I can't see where that comes in. Wealth. You always listen to wealth. I presume you accepted Mr. Haskell's side of the story. Well, it seems reasonable and it fits the facts. The fact was, he shot at me. I've examined that hedge, Miss Ford. 
It's the last place in the world that anybody would take a shot at you from. It's too high and it's too thick at that point. Anywhere else it's possible, but not there. I'm satisfied that uh, Mr. Haskell was shooting at a rabbit. And I'm satisfied that you were startled and upset. Oh, with the reason. Look, Miss Ford, I suggest that we leave the matter there. And I suggest that you and Mr. Haskell get together and find a way of settling your disputes in a sensible fashion. I don't want to have to come out here again. See? What's that, Miss Ford? Wealth. He listened. I'm going now, Miss Ford, before you say anything you might regret. I call the police for protection, not threats. Good night, Miss Ford. Well, you can't go on living next door to someone like that. I'll give over. Look, what can I do about it? We shall have to be got out of here somehow. Well, yeah, you get a bulldozer, pull it through that place. That's the only way you get rid of her. I mean, she'd go then. But then it'd be me, you'd have to provide alternative accommodation. Well, I can't come and live here with you when we're wed. I mean, not with her kids. Life would be a misery. You know what? She'd be round every five minutes. You know, saying they were making too much noise or they'd huh. broken something. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I, yeah, there'd be, you know, like there'd be no end of it, like. I reckon she's mad. She'll be put away. Yeah, but you can't just say she's mad. I mean, no one will believe it. Well, what about the police? Police? <laughs> number of times they've been round here. I mean, they'd have said it themselves. That's what they reckoned. No, all they say is they'd just, they just be nice to her and then tell me to apologise to her. Well, it's got to stop. I mean, what, what about the thing she said about me? About you? It's me. It's practically been accused of murder. <laughs> well, no one believed that. But people listen when it's said that the postwoman doesn't deliver everything in her bag. Uh-uh. I've had some looks, I can tell you. Uh, they're not being serious. I mean, you know, the things she says are so daft. Some of it sticks, Percy. You wait. Now, listen to her if it's interesting enough. Now, you'll find people say more and more about us. Well, listen, you know the best thing, then? What's that? I think you should get shot of me. You have your own life over at your own place, and then no one would say nothing about nothing. No. It's being here that does it. It's her being so unnatural. Yeah, but she's here to stay, low. Maybe. Every little thing she gets hold of, she blows up into a major catastrophe. Well, the shooting sounded serious enough, Tom. Yeah, it sounds serious enough till you get down there. Then it's a lot of something and nothing. Yeah, well, there's a small veil of her complaint starting to build. Small? You must be joking. Off you go, then. Wasn't she terrible? What? Alexandra. Oh, yeah, sadly, the Alexandra. Yeah, she gave you the uh, I'm all alone in the world bit, did she? Quite a way, yeah. yeah. Well, she's not. She's got a brother in Bradford, she can't bear him. She's got a couple of sisters in Derby to say nothing of a load of cousins and their kids. Perhaps she's just a natural loner. Pity she can't be left alone then. Oh, I was just paying for the window I broke. Oh. Been done? No, no. Mm. But uh, I can't reckon what it'll be. Is that our business? Ah, it can sort itself. Oh. Oh. Morning, Miss Ford. Good morning. Oh, Mary. Yeah. Am I early or are you late? I'm late, but I didn't get out here till eight. Yeah, you're having letters now, is she? Mm, looks like advertising wants to yeah. Oh, the electric bill. Oh, I can feel sorry for her now, then, if it's anything like ours. Cruel, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that's Percy's milk, dear, oh dear.
on your duty, then. Be a nice surprise for her, won't it? Ah. This came with the post, you say? Well, about that time. What exactly do you mean by that, Miss Ford? Well, Mr. Haskell uh, put something through. Then Mr. Steele came with the milk. Then Mrs. Walker with the post. And they usually arrive together, do they? Yes. Quite a busy time. Well, it must have been one of them. Uh, you say you were out of doors? Well, just for a little while. So you might have missed someone? Who? Oh, I don't know. I'm merely suggesting. Only one of them would want to write a thing like that. If you don't get out now, things will get worse. Guard your books well, they'll burn brightly. You think Mr. Haskell wants you out that badly, Miss Ford? Well, of course he does. But he also put that check in, paying for the window. Yes. Seems odd that he should also put this note through. Cunning. Yeah. Come in. Ah. Thank you. Did you actually see Mr. Steele at the door? Oh, uh, no, not actually, but uh, he must have been, because I put the milk money in an envelope on the step. I see. And why should Mr. Steele send a note like that? Because he is related to Mrs. Walker. And she might have put it through with the delivery? Yes. Have you uh, any idea which is the most likely? Well, I don't know. That is for you to find out, Inspector. Yes. Could you see if WPC Bill is his available, please? Oh, and a message for Constable Way. Oh, and I shall also require a car straight away. What's this all about, then, Eric? Don't you know, Puss? No. Uh, you just come round to my place and you'll hear all about it. Would you like to get in? Are you arresting me? Not as far as I know. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I like a room full of books like this. They're all I have. Very precious. Yes. I can see why you like it out here. It's my home. Where were you when the letters came through, Miss Ford? Well, in here. I just went out and fetched them. Anything else on the mat? Yes. What? Well, the letter with the cheque from Mr. Haskell. Look. How much longer are we going to be sat waiting here? Sit to my inspector. Inspector? Well, no. What, what does he want, your inspector? Hello, sir. Uh, this is Mr. Haskell. I'm Inspector Lynch. You can sit, Mr. Haskell. Yeah? I've got something here I'd like you to take a look at. Yeah, well, what's this? Uh, it seems obvious. What's to do with Miss Ford, is it? How did you know that? Well, I just, I just thought so, you know, like, because of all these... Just read it, Mr. Haskell. Uh, that's not me. I mean, uh, look, I don't write like that. No, not, not like, like printing, not like that. No, not a lot of people do. Would you write something for me, Mr. Haskell? Uh, Constable, a uh, piece of paper and a pencil, a thick pencil. No. No what? No, I'd never do a thing like that. Did you put a note through Mrs. Ford's door? Yeah, you? I did. I put a check. Anything else? No, nothing else. Here we are, then. I can't find a thick pencil, so it felt it all right. There you are, Mr. Haskell. Just uh, write your name and address, yeah. anything at all. All right, yeah. Uh, block letters, if you don't mind. No. <laughs> Thanks. Uh. When was the last time you were actually in Miss Ford's cottage? Oh, well, must be about two years ago, near enough. Can you describe it to me? You are? Tell me what it looks like. Well, it's just, you know, it's just like a table and armchairs, sort of desk there, and books. It, it's very untidy. You, know, you read of... much, Mr. Haskell? You are? Books? 
No, 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 no. Well, paper, maybe. Can do without them, eh? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, I suppose so. Miss Ford can. That's up to her. What was that about? I don't know. It's for me parents. But surely they've got somewhere. I know. But later on they'll need looking after. Later on? Ah, so there's no rush to get Miss Ford out then? Oh, I wouldn't say that. You can't live a decent life, not with her next door. How could I take the children to live there? Well, you, you try to talk to her, but you can't be kind to her. Well, have you tried? We've just been normal. We've just done our jobs and, and acted natural. Well, what more can you do? Well, a bit extra. Well, why? You know she's difficult. You don't need to with other people. Well, they just accept you as you are. Yeah. Yeah. All right, fine, Mrs. Walker. Thank you. Hey, you uh, must have a busy time then. What with the post and the kids? It is a bit, but it's not that bad. You read it all. Read? Yeah, I quite like the magazines. Books? Yeah, now and again. Miss Ford reads a lot. Well, she was a schoolmistress, wasn't she? I mean, she's got to pass the time somehow. Waiting. What's that, Miss Ford? The waiting. That's a difficult time. Uh -huh. Hey, you're right, eh? Suppose so. He never said not. No, no, me neither. <laughs> oh, he, uh, he just asked me to do some writing. Hmm? He, said, he said I pushed something through her letterbox. And me? Yeah. Cruel thing to say. What, that note? No, saying we did it. Hey, did you ask anything else, that inspector? About the cottage, about her. Not much really, thought there'd be more. I so did I. <laughs> he asked me if I could read. Hey, ask me that. What sort of things I like to read? Why? Uh, I don't know. Or well, maybe it's just being chatty. Ooh. Dick's with him now. Do you always print? Aye, mostly. It's uh, it's more clear, isn't it? I mean, people, when they leave notes about the milk, they, they mostly print, don't they? I mean, most of my customers, they... they you read it, John? Read? Uh, sometimes, when I feel like it. <laughs> Fond of your cousin Mary, are you? Fond? Oh, I suppose. Ah, yes, I am. Do favours for her, would you? Ah, if I could. Like frightening the life out of Miss Ford. No, why should I? Uh, we've had disagreements, but I mean, Mary's business has nothing to do with me. I, I, I made a mistake about Miss Ford's milk. It, it weren't deliberate. Did you put a note through her door this morning? No, why should I? I mean, she was there. If I'd had anything to say, I would have said it, wouldn't I? What did you do at her door? Let them all go. Miss Ford. And what was all that about? I don't want you here. I gathered that. You can get out, all of you. All right. I think so, sir. Miss Ford wants us out. I'm not surprised. Mr. Steele put it in his pocket. Same pencil, Miss Ford, same writing.
You pressed rather hard. Oh, well, our forensic people will be interested in this as well. I was afraid. And you thought of the one thing that would hurt you most, the books. They'd want to burn them. They never gave them a thought. None of them has really ever given you a thought, Miss Ford. You made up so much, twisted so many things. But these things happened. Oh, things happened, all right, but you colored them. And apart from the distress you've caused other people, you've put the police to a great deal of inconvenience. It's your job. No, Miss Ford, you've been a mischief maker and caused us a great deal more trouble than we need. Now, why go on like this? Like what? These constant complaints, serious complaints. And then you go and write that letter to yourself. No, I didn't. Mr. Haskell wrote it. It was you. You were prepared for Mr. Haskell, or any of the others for that matter, to take the blame. I'm sorry, Miss Ford, but you've been a mischief maker. You... you going to arrest me? I think, for your own good, it would be wise if you came away with this. Well, it could be awkward, sir, if she intends staying up. Well, I don't intend starving her out. You there, Miss Ford? Miss Ford? Yes? Open the door, please. No. You ask. Miss Ford, it'd be better if you opened the door and came with us. No, it wouldn't. You must be sensible. Uh, take a look around and see if you can find the key. Miss Ford, we're looking for the key. Is it about? No. I keep it in my pocket. Well, go on. Keep looking. It might still be down here. Are you comfortable in there? Go away. You're not doing yourself any good, you know. You realize what you've done, don't you? You falsely accused other people. You have brought false accusations, Miss Ford. A woman of your education. Now, you know how silly that letter was, and so do I. If it's any interest to you, I can also understand why. You can't. And you must tell us, Miss Ford. You must help us to understand. How can I? What happened 18 months ago, Miss Ford? Something happened, Miss Ford. What was it? He got married. After all these years, he got married and the letters stopped. I knew I was alone. Who was this, Miss Ford? Him. Yes, but who? He was mine. Try telling me about it. No. Why not? It'll help. He was a... a school teacher... like me. We were... promised... to each other. And then I had to resign and we were apart. He, he wrote for, for a bit. And then I knew it was over. Did you tell anyone? There wasn't anybody to tell. Your relatives. I've got no relatives. 
I was given to understand you at any number. Oh. Oh, you could tell people anything. So what you told people about your relations just wasn't true. You must realize, Miss Ford, that you've had various officers out here and spoken to you at different times. You've spoken to them. You told one of them you had a brother and two sisters. That's what you told Sergeant Stone. I didn't. Perhaps you've forgotten. I do not forget. It's time for us all to go now, Miss Ford. No, I don't want to go. I'll, I'll never come back. They won't let me. It's for your own good. You'll put me in prison. I want to avoid that. I don't see how you can. It's treatment I want her for, not the inside of a nick. Just a matter of shifting her. No one wants to put you in prison, Miss Ford. Miss Ford, you really must open the door and come with us. I haven't done anything wrong. I'm only protecting myself from prosecution. We don't accept excuses for bad behavior. Where am I to go? With us. But you won't be there all the time. You'll be wanting some books. 